but what is your total budget? So we can kind of grasp. It's this number at the very bottom. Of the? The 6.089 billion. That's all funds. DHS grant total. So down That's the first total column. budget? That is our total of a probe for FY14. Okay. Federal, GRF, and other state funds. Okay. And what, pardon me? That's the budget passed by the General Assembly. It does not include a, a handful of non-appropriated accounts that we have through the comptroller, particularly the big ones for uh, SNAP and for WIC. Th those numbers are not in here. That's because, they're, that that's because they're pass-throughs. Okay. And there's okay, I'm just trying to get just an overall view. Yeah, so what is your total staffing from last year in the budget? Uh, we right now have on board... Uh, just about 12 point, right about, right at 12,000. Okay. And so in the um, budget for the um, 2014, you had 600 additional new hires, correct? Yes. And so then in the last uh, arbitrator's agreement on the Maximus contract for DHS, it was 520 new staffing members, correct? Is that in addition? No, that's part of the, part of the original 600. Oh, okay. We were looking at, at the time, looking at the 600 plus the vacancies that we had. So the 520 fit okay. within the numbers that we were looking at. Oh, okay. I just wanted to get that straight. And um, this other sheet that you gave us on the collective bargaining. So those are estimated cost increases in the FY15 budget. And so is it 30.7, is, is it a total? Under three, total FY15, 34.3. So that, that's just personal services? 34.3 is, is in our personal services. The other two, the first one is the SEIU for the Home Services Program at 30.7. Right. The second one is SEIU for the Child Care Program at 27.2. So just to be clear. No. Okay. So to be clear, the increases of the collective bargaining in the FY15 budget is over 80 million? Is that right? Yes, those would be the hired by contract. Yes. Right. It's the, so your obligation is over 80 million increase. So I wanted to ask the question about um, the information about the, problem, the eligibility with hiring the people or whatever's going on with the new, it sounds so, was it like 80,000 new people are coming in and? Well, thank you for asking. Um, you're talking about our hiring. Yeah. Well, hiring plus addressing, you know, the 80,000, and I wanted to ask of those 80,000, there was um, mentioned in something I read about the percentage of people that were coming in at the new rate and the old rate regarding the Medicaid expansion at, if they were 100% or the old rate at 50%. Okay. So first, to answer the question about the, what Leader Bellick is referring to as the 80,000, she's referring to the applications, Medicaid applications, that have been accumulating at the federal level since October 1st for those applicants who went through the federal website to apply for health coverage. Um, like other states that have expanded Medicaid, we have a number of factors that contributed to an initial backlog. We had the expanded eligibility, of course. We have a new system a new and new policy, so there's a steep learning curve for our workers. Um, we had startup issues with the system, the IES system, that have now been resolved. And so we, we had a backlog, as other states have developed. And now we are getting those transfers from the FFM, the Federally Facilitated Marketplace, and that has added to the backlog. The federal component of the backlog is going to be very high visibility nationally, um, and, and so we've taken a number of steps to address both of these backlogs. We continue to hire as rapidly as possible because our, our staffing is still our staffing levels are still low relative to the caseload. We're shifting loads among our offices, transferring applications to those offices that um, have more staff or lower caseloads. We have we opened at the start of October a 100-person calling center, and so that they're able to assist people with their applications. We've taken a number of steps um, to address 
this these back these backlogs and we we are hoping to see light at the end of the tunnel in several months probably in the summertime in the meantime we really are um, having to staff up and having to ask for people's patience this is something that you will hear in your offices because there is quite um, quite a large backload at this point but we are um, prioritizing those that have come from the feds we're prior prioritizing the applications from the federal government because their applications are um, not clean. A large percentage of them could be ineligible for Medicaid and eligible for the, for the marketplace. So because there is a cutoff date for marketplace applications, we want to make sure that people have coverage and that they don't go without coverage because of a delay in processing their application. A little jumbled, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, it's a complicated issue. So... Um, I guess the second part of that question was in the um, report or whatever I saw was that um, a lot of them were not coming in at the 100% rate in the, in the Medicaid expansion that are coming onto the Illinois rolls. Um, I'm just trying to address... You know, the cost that yes. we had you're, concerns you're, on, number one, the administrative cost, which I imagine would go into what you were just talking about, and two, the cost of if they don't come in at 100 percent, you know, say right. like 60 percent of that 80,000 don't come in at... Right. There's, we don't have a way of weeding out which people are... Let me start over. We have those who are newly eligible under the expanded categories of new Medicaid. Those applications have come in. There is some component of our applications that, um, for people who were previously eligible. So I believe Leader Belka is talking about those, the woodwork effect. Um, you, you probably heard about that from Director Hamos, that there are people who were previously eligible, but they didn't think to apply. We have no way of knowing whether people who are playing now didn't apply before, why they didn't apply before, because they look like all of the other Medicaid applications from the old eligibility group. We process, we receive how many applications per month for Medicaid? Well, you know what, Michelle? I don't want to delay. The well, even in the past, we received 80,000 applications for Medicaid per month before October 1st. 